I'm recording now, so don't say anything. You don't want it to be used against you in a court of law. Edge. Edge, edge, edge. No, we're fucked. Edge. All right. Come and get us, Tim. Hey everyone, this is the fifth episode of the Giant Bomb Community Podcast. I'm Ghost Yet, and today I'll be your host, since Fat Mag is sadly absent. Apparently he's moving, but we all know he's simply binge-playing Dota, so screw him. Joining me today is Nyx Iron, the best thief in the world. Hello. I, uh... You are the best may, thief may in the world. Maybe the best thief in the world. We, got, we have to test it. Also joining me is Morbid Coffee. That's me. And I'm not a fan of this Polish cast. I think we need an American cast. Hey, we have three Americans, so it's close enough, right? I'm Unfortunately, th- Morbid Coffee <laughs> couldn't join us. <laughs> <laughs> I he had to leave early today. I don't know what happened to him, but uh, hopefully we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> also joining us is Red and Black. Edge. Yeah, and now, and now we're fucked. A man who, like Nintendo, his name starts with a red N. <laughs> That's right. And oh, last but me. not fucking least, Alaska Gamer. Irashaimase. He knew that shit was coming. I listened to 8-4. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that, yeah, that, that, that wasn't even my podcast. <laughs> okay, I, I'm now hijacking this podcast. It is now the 8-4 community podcast. <laughs> I was actually going to do that today, too, which is uh, I done. I do right up from under you. Like the master thief that I am, although apparently I'm fucking terrible. So yeah, right. but, but that's okay. Just like quick load, right? Yeah, exactly. Just quick load. It. You could be the best lookout, though. Yeah, all I do is stand still and do nothing, and it helps my team. Yeah. <laughs> all right. I need to pick up this game and play it with you guys. You should. It's really good. I need to. Oh, we gotta talk about Monaco in a bit. First thing, f- let's start this baby with some Gundam talk. Morbid. No, no, Marba. Not, not Marba. Alaska and Nyx, speak to me about the Gundams. They're giant robots. They're awesome. They don't get quite the same recognition outside of Japan, even though they should. Thank you. Oh, like, like, you mean like the movie Robot Jocks? <laughs> <laughs> Remember the power oh, actors? Basically, that idea, except people actually liked it. Um, no. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like Super Sentai. It's pretty awesome. Um, yeah. So tell oh, yeah, me... Be- Tell me about another yeah, so episode. Be- because the games that I had originally planned to talk about last week, we did not get to talk about because we uh, went a bit too long. That's actually yeah, true, by the way. Dude, don't, like, dude, dude, don't bitch. Long. This is your chance. No, yeah. don't, I'm gonna bitch. So, so, now, I'll, so, I need so to, now I get to um, first. Well, I'll bitch so, after the talk. Go ahead. Yeah. So... Uh, so as uh, Ghosty had said, Nick, uh, Nix and I, we've been playing a little bit of Gundam. Gundam Breaker. The beta for an upcoming Japan only PS3 game where you play as Gundams. Well, you got me at play as Gundams. It's, it's uh, yeah. so. Do you actually play uh, as as the Gundam, or are you playing as the man driving the well, Gundam? That's well, that's you say that because in this game you play as neither the man driving the Gundam or the Gundam. So, oh shit! Go ahead and explain yeah, how it works. It to, game breaker. To explain really quickly, oh, it's right. basically. Like, you're playing as Gundam model kits, specifically, with Armored Core-style customization in a Fantasy Star Online-structured kind of game. So it's Disney Infinity with Gundams. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, I can see the comparison. Yeah, like, be- uh, yeah, it's because uh, to go with specifically with the aesthetic, it's not literally like the actual Gundams, like these sort of big machines, but... Uh, like the Gundams that you're playing as, uh, they are designed to mm, be sort of like the model kits or Gunplas, mm-hmm. as mm-hmm. they refer to them in the game. Or in because, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's how they uh, do. In fact, I guess that's how they refer to them at all because it's not like we get those over here. So, yeah, <laughs> um, un- unless we have to pay. Oh uh, yeah, price trust, for trust me, I uh, yeah. I've paid the price. 
Yeah. So talk talk about the Armored Core, because I actually really like the Armored Core game. So what, what do you mean when you say with Armored Core customization about it? Mm-hmm. it you basically like switch out uh, like different parts to cu- uh, customize the Gundam, because there are the different parts that, when uh, put together, make a specific kind of Gundam. You know, you can make like, like the very original uh, Gundam or like the Master Gundam from uh, G Gundam and all these other... Uh, Gundams, but you can like you know swap out the heads, the torsos, legs, arms. You can change out like the backpacks uh, and other weapons. Like you can equip a short range weapon, like an axe or beam saber, or a long range weapon. And and to go with it are also you can choose which sort of special attacks or or uh, or optional attacks that you can uh, assign to your Gundam. It's that kind of- sounds cool. Yeah. I mean. I mean, I you know, I, I always really like the Gran Turismo games and, and even Forza. The the part customization it, uh, that really appeals to me. I, I really enjoy the Armored Core games, especially for PlayStation Two. Um, yeah, I, I really like I, the PlayStation One games. Uh, the the part customization stuff is really cool. I I, I don't yeah. you know I don't really care for the aesthetic and everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, like I said, robot yeah, jocks yeah, the thing that does. Awesome. Yeah, the thing that does make it somewhat different from Armored Core is, again, when it comes to, like, customizing your abilities. Because, like, when you customize stuff in Armored uh, Core, you know, like, the only real fundamental difference that you can make is usually the type of legs that you equip on your Armored Cores. You know, like, tank treads or, you know, or, you know like, quadruped legs or just the regular bipedals. But, like, in this, you know, you can... And, you know, dep- and it, it depends on the type of weapons that you have equipped. So, you know, like if you have, like, say, an axe, you know, one special attack can, like, have you do, like, a sort of spin attack. Or, mm-hmm. And if you have, like, just, like, a beam rifle, one of your special attacks will, like, have you shoot a very powerful energy beam. Is the game fun? That sounds kind no, of... No, that, that, yeah, that's, that's kind of where it breaks down, unfortunately. I find the <laughs> gameplay to be a little bit trying at, uh, at best. It's, it's, I mean, it's, it's okay... Like the thing that that there are other hooks in that game that you know, that keep you going, even though like the ge- the core gameplay itself is not the best. I mean, it's like I've I've heard people compare it to like the to Dynasty uh, to the Dynasty Warrior Gundam games, but mm-hmm. like uh, to me specifically, kind of felt a little bit like Max Anarchy or Anarchy Reigns. Yeah, for everyone outside of Japan. It, like, I was how, how fast is it, or maybe better, how slow is it? Like, it's really, it's time. really stiff. Uh, I guess would be the best way I would describe yeah, it. Yeah, like, like it's it's really like disappointing too. Cause like, ah, like, uh, the potential is there, but it's just so kind of like yeah. stilted, I guess. Yeah, but I, it's shame. still. I mean, it's I I still had I still had fun of it. There were things about uh, the gameplay for sure that I definitely wish were uh, different. Like, sp- particularly like there's stuff like the lock on system for it is a little yeah. finicky. <laughs> To say the least. Like it automatically, it automatically locks on to enemies. But instead of like just flicking uh, like the right analog stick to like switch to the next target, depend like depending on how far away the next target is, you actually have to hold the right analog stick in a direction in order to move the camera and then mm-hmm. lock on to that. But it's there's still some uh, fun. Like I could definitely see how in some instances it, it would be better to play it. Like with other people, because while I mostly did go through it single player, just trying to find what parts I wanted to customize my Gundam, I did get into a couple of multiplayer games after fumbling around and like the sort of like finding a room to join. <laughs> yeah, and then like that, and that was the only way I was able to like get to uh, through the last mission of the beta, like because like the uh, mission five is is pr- is pretty difficult. Like I could not get through it single player, but with like three other guys, it was definitely more manageable. Did you, or, so did you do the mission where you have to defend the generator? Yeah, so I, I couldn't do that shit, man. I mean, well, Why? yeah, it, it's definitely it's not bad, to do I that. guess. I don't know. It, 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 it kind of depends. Whatever, on it's why. easy. It's just a generator. You just defend it. I don't know what the problem <laughs> well, is. Well, just... well, well, part of well, part of it defen- depends on like how how good your overall skill of the game is, and the other part comes down to how good the parts are that you get. Yeah. Because like it's not it's not like Armored Core where the parts are the exact same and they have and you buy them from a shop and they have the exact same buy and sell value. In, instead, you like get the parts through missions as loot. So that's kind of where the PSO similarity kind of comes in because you start out in the hub where you can customize your Gundam and then you go out into missions. And basically, just like hack through enemies and get loot in the process. Sometimes by like uh, hacking off like limbs or other parts of the Gundam. That was actually one of the cool things about the gameplay. I thought, and especially does show yeah. the 
the the the the plastic model aspect of the Gundams because you can actually see like if you chop off a Gundam's head you'll see the little ball joint on the top of the torso where the head would have been <laughs> and like and even cooler is like if you're able to like cut off the torso from the waist up like it won't be able to move and that'll le- leave it open like to do a little like finishing attack yeah so well, that, I mean, that or, or your cool. one combo which unfortunately is kind of all you have for weapon uh, yeah like, that was kind of the main even, point for me I was like you know just a little more depth there yeah e- yeah even even with like the different weapons between stuff like the axe or the beam saber like the combos are 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 pretty much all just identical yeah, it's still kind of a little bit hard to tell just because this is a beta for a game that's coming out this summer yeah. i mean i would i wouldn't mind getting it it's just because i think like the loot aspect and spending time like similar to armored core just spending a good chunk of the game in menus trying to find which parts uh, are, uh, are fit best. Mm-hmm. I it definitely made me want to play yeah. Fantasy Star Online more. So I guess that's good. It, uh, uh, playing through it, it, it made me really want to play another Century's episode too, which yeah. is exactly what I did. Well, and before we move on, another... that's, uh, I think Coffee wants to ask us about. Yeah, Coffee, uh, I, I, got I, stupid I, questions. Go my, my idea on. for this game isn't what they're going for because the way you guys are making it sound, it's just like an Armor Core clone. I, I kind of wish they played up the model aspect of it. Where like the different loot had was like the different levels of model where like the low level like loot was just grade. yeah like the low loot level shit is just shit you can I, snap into I your model that's... but then the high loot level yeah. you have to go out and buy the specific glue to glue the pieces <laughs> that to your would model. Be yeah, so like, like so like your your, I... your robot will look like shit if you don't go out and buy the specific acrylic paint yeah. to paint it. <laughs> yeah, so like that's not, I'm not exactly like what you're describing, but I remember hearing something where like. For some reason, I thought it was going to be an update they would put out for the beta, but I'm guessing it's saved for the full game. I don't know. I, I haven't checked the beta in the last few days, but apparently they, I, I, I want to say I heard something about them, like you could be able to like mix, you know, for example, high grade and master grade pieces <laughs> together. That's and because like and and also keeping and, and like plus keeping true to the whole like the uh, gun the model aesthetic. There are, like, different sizes of Gundams. Like, one of the missions, like, the fourth mission has you fighting against a gigantic RX-782 Gundam, which, like, the Gundam you play as is one 144th of scale, while the Gundam you fight at the end of mission four is, like, 160th or something. Which is actually pretty cool, because that that is to scale, right? That is pretty, like, accurate. Like, there is a 160th scale uh, perfect grade RX, if I I recall correctly. Do they have mm-hmm. the little pieces that are really easy to lose? <laughs> no, you, you don't. The, you don't this, have to. Worry this doesn't about... sound like any Gundam model I've ever built. Then <laughs> I, I've never if had a problem with losing in, pieces. If I inhale too much of the glue, does it make the screen get all ruddy <laughs> and everything? I don't, I, I don't know, <laughs> but, I, but, but like you can. Dude, it's coming. Like... It's Oculus Rift support is coming. DLC. Yeah. Wait, for, wait DLC. for Oculus Rift support. Yeah. Oh, oh yes. Well, yeah, well. But like as I mentioned earlier, after playing a bit a bit of uh, Gundam Breaker, maybe really want to play another Century's episode too, which is what I went to play, which has, and that game has much better controls and combat than Gundam Breaker does. But of course, like the focus on that one is much different than what Gundam Breaker is going for. Yeah, like, like being good. Yeah. Game. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, th- that and not and and not about customizing and mix uh, and mishmashing yeah, like yeah. Uh, Gundam pieces and more about accurately representing these other licensed mecha. So like that's the thing with another century's episode is like if if you're even the least bit familiar with what Super Robot Wars is in in, in Japan, like this is that, but as an uh, but as a third person action mecha game rather than a strategy RPG. Yeah, it's made, by, it's, it's made by From, right? Right, From, yeah, From yeah. and Bram, uh, and Bam Presto worked together on that. And they made, like, three of those games for PS2. And then a PS3 game, which was not, wasn't really that great, but I still stuck with it just because of the licenses they had that I particularly enjoyed. Yeah, it's not like you get Ace every year, so... <laughs> Yeah. Well, yeah, especially after that, so like, I, I doubt that they really felt like making more... <laughs> Which is kind of a shame, because like the concepts, like like regardless of, because like the, the, it's already sealed its fates many times of of being in Japan only just because of the licenses, especially with something like Macross, you know, because Harmony yeah. Gold can well, fuck themselves, <laughs> but like 
but uh, like if you just take the like light uh, license stuff out of the equation like the core gameplay in that is really good like it is like a much like maybe not so much close to armored core but maybe like a better zone of the enders like it's that sort of fast-paced like it's a mecha game where verticality is like a is like a, an important factor of the game whereas you know like in armored core you know you can hover with the bo- uh, boost but you're still going to be weighed down by gravity like but in ace you can like with the exception of some units you can pretty much stay up in the air and the, the amount of time that you have to boost around the area is much more lenient than what armored core allows mm. but it's really cool especially when you get into space which is like when you're in space you like press the uh, right analog tip uh, stick up and down to not just adjust the camera but also adjust the pitch of where like your Gundam is uh, or not, not Gundam or just any of your robots are facing so you really can so it's almost like a sort of simplified kind of space sim just flying around so how, how much worse is uh, R compared to like Ace 2 and 3 like it it's sluggish in uh, comparison okay. Especially when you get into like melee combat. Like my question like, would be: is, is it is it still good and just bad compared to Ace Two, or is it just not even worth kind of playing? It's 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 definitely worse compared. It's definitely horrible compared to the <laughs> uh, PS2 Ace games as a game itself. It's it's boring on like just average to kind of mediocre All right. again part of it is just that the licenses and how they represent the different robots like not just in abilities but size mm-hmm. you know because when you get like a big combining robot like aquarion or an ace three get a robo like it's huge like everything else is tiny in comparison Whereas if you're like as a gundam or like a valkyrie and from macross you know things are more at your size yeah, I don't want to pay ninety dollars for the import though. Oh, my God, whatever. Like I'm, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. I would. <laughs> whatever. Yeah, I, I care about. Yeah, I, I care about getting the original versions of the game in yeah. any way. So I, I, I really so I'd be will. I'd be willing to get, uh, to pay the money for. Like it. I, I, I would like to buy the final, but like it's ninety two plus shipping Canadian. Like oh my God, Custom Robo is person. great. Well, Custom Robo is like way overhead though. It's not really third person. It's like the Monaco yeah, just... of custom robo, or <laughs> robo fighting games, yeah. except not really. Yeah, it's still, it's still just so yeah. weird and upsetting to me. You know, just whenever I think about Ace and like not just that, but all these other like licensed mecha games, yeah. you kind of realize that well, even though we don't get a lot of them, the ones that Japan gets are surprisingly decent. Like licensed games, you know, like like we all know that all uh, that uh, the uh, the overwhelming majority of them are just trash, but just every time I look at like the Japan only games uh, over there, specifically the kind that involve like mecha and licensed mecha, they're always like managed to not suck. I mean, they still have some amount of problems. Like even if they get the gameplay systems down, they just uh, they often slack off on level design and progression. Mm-hmm. They seem to take them much more seriously than than I, I guess than it seems like I would expect them to. I mean, they they treat these much well, more like huge. like. Well, no, I mean, I know that, but I mean, they don't, in terms of the games, they don't churn them out the way they churn out, you know, Final Fantasy style games yeah, yeah. and Square style yeah. games. I mean, they treat them much more like a like a Gran Turismo or something. Like, like, like a, they, game, they, a game first and licenses second, not like over in the yeah. West, where it's like, hey, yeah. just put whatever it is out and just put the name on it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, like, su- <laughs> like Super, Robot, uh, Super Robot Wars is huge, like, not just for the fact that it features all these sort of, like, different crazy, like, um, this crazy crossover of different games. Uh, uh, of different series but you know like it is effectively kind of like an advertisement for all those different shows and like that's kind of the thing because like on on top of you know accurate accurately representing all, like all these different giant robots both new and old you know they like uh, also like give it more exposure even like all the older like a, a lot of the times samey kind of super robots so it's real fascinating I mean, it's like of all the smooth. different genre, uh, of all the different kind of genres that are mostly associated with Japan, that is the one thing that I wish we got more of. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I mean, I mean, visual novels have their own niche here. I mean, like, not many people, like, like next to nobody, is really like begging for an idol master or. Oh, Project yeah, but, hey, that, 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 that came out. Uh, right, uh, visual novels. But is... the idol master. Yeah, idol master came in on uh, on iTunes. 
Yeah, something like that. I don't know why. I don't know what... Uh, I mean, it, it does seem like with digital distribution channels, the overhead that it would take to release something is so much lower than it used to be, you know, in previous generations. I, uh, guess, I, I am kind of surprised that they don't they do not do more of this. Because, like, the, the only exposure of, like, mecha games from Japan that we get over here are, like, it, in any uh, significant way is Armored Core. And even then, that's not really a super robot yeah. kind of thing. Like, yeah, it's, it's more because, I think it's because, uh, hard science. Yeah, I think it's because Japan doesn't really get the internet. Yes, that is true. It's, it's Japan. It's because Japan loves giant robots. They have, like, their the own internet, possible. basically. <laughs> yeah. I'm watching the trailer for Robot Tyson UX, and it's making me really sad because it's never going to come over here, and the 3DS is region locked. So, yeah, I never we, get to play. We won't it. be able. To, we won't be getting any Majin Kaiser Skull out of that. Yeah. yeah. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Whatever, I care about that. Majin Kaiser Skull, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to get too deep just because this is an anime <laughs> podcast, but I'll just say that Majin Kaiser Skull is pretty dope. 450 anyway, bucks for the... It. Oh, my God. Acknowledged. <laughs> I, I was going to buy a Japanese 3DS just to play this, but it's 450 bucks with the bundle. Like, no thanks. <laughs> That's rough. Yeah. Although it is a, it is a giant mecha-themed 3DS. Kind of want it. It's got, yeah. the, it's got the... So this is pretty awesome, actually. It's got the, uh, the grid... Like, you know, like in Super Robot Wars. Oh, uh, yeah. It's on the outside of the DS with the, like, the backgrounds. It's so awesome. Oh, my God. That sounds pretty cool. 400 bucks. Fuck. Dude, you're not Jeff. No, I'm not Jeff. <laughs> Manage yourself. I'd rather buy the Shimpigoi yeah. Tensei 4 limited edition uh, anyway. See? It's yeah. It's fucking amazing. So, yeah, that's, that's it for Japanese mecha. Yeah. What's about that uh, Raymond Legends app? Yeah, just pretty yeah, for that. So, what is, what is real... it? What is it? It's basically so. So we all know that Rayman Legends was originally supposed to be just a Wii U exclusive that came out at the end of February, but got delayed to be released alongside GTA V, so it would die <laughs> yep. on multiple platforms. And just like Origins like, did, so yeah, that's they're really yeah, they're, they're, like they're only trying to keep up the tradition of fucking over this this game. It's that Ubisoft yeah, Rockstar yeah, crossover game. Screwing over Michelle Ancel and everyone who worked on cr- uh, who, who like did crunch on this game just to get it finished. So this is basically that like it's in a lot of ways you could describe it as a demo because it does have like three main levels that I think have been shown like at previous press demos. I mean, like, uh, but the the main hook behind this is that there are cha- daily challenges mm. that are like very specific sort of things, like collect a certain amount of lums, which are like sort of like weird floating yellow or purple stuff that you can get for points. You, like collect those in a certain amount of time, or like, uh, or you know, like with the the Murphy segments, you know, the one where you're like using the game pad mm-hmm. to like tap on things in the environment while like are blow box or player? Rematch. Are the Murphy segments playable in uh, in single player, or just multi- or, or or they're just straight up they're local si- multiplayer? They're, they're, well, they're uh, they they are single player because like oh. the, because the characters like Rayman or Globox or whoever you know they're just controlled by the AI and like hmm. move automatically. Oh, okay, so you're just controlling That's neat. Murphy. Yeah, it it is it is pretty neat. So it's I challenges kind of based around. That. Yeah, it's challenges based around like those uh, sort of like specific goals, you know, like when during the Murphy segments, you know, like try and like clear the path for as long as you can before like the wall of fire catches up to Globox and and other stuff. It's really neat. Like this is just their way of sort of, uh, of acknowledging, hey, we know that uh, that you people were like the people that were excited for this game. You were bummed when they decided to delay it and send it out to die in the middle of September. Yeah. Here's something that can hold you over until then. It, it's 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 neat. It's I, the, the the most positive thing I can say about that is that it has given me a reason to turn on my Wii U every day, <laughs> which I have not, which I had not done like. My, um, since last month or so when I was messing around with the Monster Hunter demo. Man, I wonder if the Wii U is going to be as bad as the Wii when it comes to, you know, games. I just like, wonder if, like third-party <laughs> games? No, it, you know, Unfortunately, you know how it was probably. with the Wii. Like, you played, yeah. like, you yeah, waited for a Nintendo release and then, well, not going it's to, like every nine not going to launch it in, yeah. half, in half a year. And then, like, three of the best games of the Wii just came out. Like what? I, like Last Story, Xenoblade, mm. and uh, Pandora's Tower are like really good games that are easily deserved. And like 
one of them even uses the Wii's I, controls I would, I would legitimately. Cla- I would not classify Zen. I would not classify Xenoblade as a good game. I would. I think. <laughs> I think it's. Uh, I think it's quite well made and. Don't fight. Don't fight. Pretty good. Yeah, but like, are you? You know, how many times have you played through the Xenosaga series? Exactly. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> no, it's totally fine. They're not even the same. It's like we're in the... I, no, I know, every, but they're similar enough. It just, it just makes my blood fucking boil every time you bring up that goddamn game. I hate it so much. <laughs> why, do hate, why do you hate Xenosaga so much? Because they so very obviously wanted to make an anime series and Square, after their Final Fantasy movie, tanked, and then everyone hated it, and it, you know, since yeah, the but that's, this is developed it. by the one of the lead writers from Monosoft, so it doesn't have anything to do with Square. Speaking of it was fighting published games. by Square. Oh, I know. Yeah, speaking, it, of, speaking of fighting, on it. yeah. My point is, is that they wanted to make a <laughs> very obviously wanted to make like a, a multi-part anime series. No, so yeah, they told them no. Well, they wanted so to they it. crammed it into a video game, like really half-assed. They, went all, they wanted to make they, a video they game. They all Kojima part, with the right? cutscenes. Like the saga is basically Xenogears is supposed to be a six-part huge anime epic storyline game with great gameplay, by the way. In Xenogears, uh, awesome. they, they only got to make one game, so they crammed a bunch of it in on the end. And they're like, all right, let's try this again. They got three games in this time before it got canceled. So a little better. No. Anybody else play Injustice this week? I no. I was playing it, but I heard no. the. I, I I only play good fighting games. Ooh. I played some of it over the last <laughs> I, I, of weeks. I I just I I am not saying Injustice is bad. I just you. You know what I've what fighting game I've been playing. I don't play, I play fighting games that are like Mortal Kombat in any way. So call me elitist or whatever. But well, more what you what would you think elitist. of it since we didn't have you on last week? Uh, Injustice is really dumb. Yeah, but it has, but I, I will I will concede that point. Do you think? But I mean, did you did you, did you have any fun with it at least? It's okay. There, it's a good game with a lot of problems. And like NetherRealm likes their patches, so I give this game like four months before it's patched, what, and then patched again four months after that. Uh, fucked in the balance department, or is it buggy? Kind of. Like, Aquaman is so ridiculously fucking overpowered compared to everybody else in the cast that there's pretty much no reason to not use him. I don't know. What makes him I, overpowered I, I think is, yeah. you know, who here played Mortal Kombat 9? Me, I, but, I, okay, I played so. it, but like I, o- I only played Mortal Kombat 9 just for the story mode. Alright, so you know how that game I had did. the combo breaker in it, where you had the build-up meter, and then you had nice. like a chance to break the combo meter. So Aquaman's treat is basically that, but it regenerates every five seconds. <laughs> so it's basically wow. an infinite combo breaker. Oh my god. So mm. his treat basically reduces the amount of hit stun he's in. Mm-hmm. And it will allow him to drop out of combos mid combo and recover faster and be able to interrupt the guy. Wow. Mm-hmm. So does that cancel out proration as well, or what about? I mean, is he? But I mean, does he work well from range, or is he all up close? Yes, he has. Uh, well, I'm um, coming from the fighting game community. We all call it the seismo because yep. it's like the C viper yeah. thing, where he basically has a projectile that comes from the ground and it can hit full screen. So like you can interrupt people trying to do interactables and you can't react to it. Like it's really hard to react to it as it's coming yeah. because it's almost instant. It's like two or three frames. So you can't even jump on reaction. You just either have to get hit by it or you have to jump <laughs> like preempt and uh, like before it even happens, so he's, he's just, just really fucking ridiculous. He's just overpowered, not completely buggy, buggy and fucked. No, he's like, the, the like game Doob isn't buggy at all. Yeah, like, yeah. No, it's. I mean, just... what you described, like yeah, even if that is kind of, I guess, frustrating in terms of balance, like in in terms of uh, character, I kind of find it hilarious that uh, that's such a character that just gets pissed on as much as Aquaman is as powerful as he is in this game. Yeah, I think it's kind really of hilarious. The thing with Aquaman is, so, is just, that... just subvert that trope. Yeah. So that's another thing. That I trope only exists hilarious. in uh, ignorant people's minds because oh, Aquaman has been awesome in comics since like. A long, a long time. The only reason why people mock him is because uh, he was useless in the Super Friends cartoon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, 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 I'll admit to watching Super Friends and even yeah, yeah, yeah. he was pretty but, dumb like, in that one. But yeah, but Aquaman in comics is really awesome. So, so that's another thing I find hilarious He was pretty decent in the Justice League cartoon, actually. Not that I remember. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
they go out of their way to make Aquaman a super badass to the point <laughs> where during yeah. the story you have Batman, like he gets Green Arrow, the Flash, yeah. and Wonder Woman. He's like, I have this weapon that can beat evil Superman, but we need Aquaman's help. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. So I I mean I guess Bravo the, 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 realm. the the group that I was playing with had obviously not you know, gone that deep into the whole, into the balance and everything like that. The the thing that I think is really interesting about it is, it at least gives the the illusion that there are, there are multiple ways in and out of every situation. You know, it's like if I'm getting really beat up, I it's not like in Marvel vs. Capcom where you have a character, a group of characters, and there's like one way to play those. And if you're losing a fight, you know, whatever whatever strategy you're trying isn't working, it at least feels like you can say, well, I'll just pick up this motorcycle and throw it at you. Like, yeah. there, there always feels like there's another out or another way out of a situation. Well, that's the thing and, I like about the game is it actually emphasizes stage control more than other fighting games. Like, other fighting games, stage control is basically how close do I have the guy to the corner yeah. and how well can I control that space this is more like how, how okay so I know that guy is underneath that yeah. TV and he can throw that TV at me so I have to either get in and make sure he can't throw it or just harass him while he yeah. tries to throw it I have yeah. two like, questions. How, how close is he to the wall so that you can bounce him off for even more combos yeah I actually have two questions is there a map is there a stage that is I, I guess I could say overpowered like is yes. there a stage where you could just Yes, completely the balance. Uh, it is affectionately, affectionately known as the pig stage. And <laughs> hilariously enough, the Injustice Pig has his own Twitter account now. <laughs> <laughs> How many followers? Uh, too many. Uh, <laughs> wow. Uh, do you but, feel uh, like so uh, again? The, uh, we, I wasn't playing with you know a fighting game community, you know wankers or anything. But do you do you feel like do you feel like certain characters are more powered in certain stages? Uh, not really. I mean, each character has their own, like, type. Like, you have gadget characters, you have yeah. power characters, mm -hmm. and yeah, have, we like, got that. agility characters. So, like, all the environmental things change depending on what character you're playing as. So, like, for example, uh, I think it's on the Hall of Justice level. There's, like, a little robot that goes back and forth in the background and... Just as an example, gadget characters will hack that robot and he'll go in a straight line and blow up when it reaches the guy, which uh, you can see coming, whereas if you play as a power character, he'll just pick up the fucking robot and throw <laughs> So yeah. and that's a little bit faster than the. Uh, I like I like those characters yeah. better. Um, it, it, it just solve everything by just picking stuff and picking shit yeah. up and throwing it. I played a lot of Doomsday. Um, <laughs> But, uh, you know, like this is what I was trying to talk about last week is like accessibility is what fighting games are like trying to crack, which is how do you make something that you can play, you know, play forever. And there's a ton of different strategies and a ton of different ways to play it and enjoy it, but also make it easy enough that you can actually learn to understand that stuff because all of this stuff is happening in like a fraction of a second. Right. Mm -hmm. And you don't have time to to. When you're when you're first starting to play, you just don't have the time to like pick up on all the different subtleties and the different you know frame animations and stuff like that. And it feels like what they try to do in Injustice is say, okay, even if you're going to lose this fight, it's going to be incredibly entertaining for you to participate in, and you're mm. going to at least feel like you have like you have a way out of whatever situation you're in. Like you at least feel like I can do something to make an, to make an impact on the other character. Mm. I, I think I, I don't think they completely nailed it, and I think that wager move thing is is just like they didn't know what they, they they still don't quite know what they're doing with it. But I feel like they they made a a really positive step in the direction of like let's let's make this something that that you don't have to be a fucking frame counter to just understand cool. that you can have a chance to play this game. Netherrealm is like one of the few developers that actually listen to their community both the hardcore and the casual community so they're trying to find a balance between the two of those to make a good fighting game that both guy both communities can enjoy and i think injustice is the closest they've come yet because it's not yeah. going to be that big in the competitive scene but no, it's still I, fun yeah, just probably. to fuck around in yeah is captain marvel awesome yes that's all i need to know to buy this game <laughs> 
I actually saw that uh, if you win a, if you win around uh, if you win around he has a taunt where he changes to Billy to Billy Batson for a split second, which is awesome. Yep. Nice. He also has a suplex. Sold. I hate it. Is there a, <laughs> is there a classic costume for him? Because the uh, New Fifty Two redesign fucking sucks. I don't, How about Miracle Man DLC? is DLC? I wonder what the odds of that happening are. <laughs> <laughs> the, I don't know. Does he use like Miracle Whip as his weapon or something? <laughs> No, I that's, I wonder if that's that, the only thing that came to my mind when you said Miracle Man, and I was like, "What? What the fuck is that?" I wonder if that list is actually true. Oh, is there a leak list or something? Yeah, I apparently it was. It's like Lobo is confirmed, hmm. but after that there was supposed to be Zod, hmm. Batgirl, Zod which be in fucking there in sucks, the and Scorpion. So as in Scorpion. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> tell me. I don't think I, Scorpion. They, seems they had unlikely. to get the crossover character. Right? I mean, like they had Freddy yeah. and MK9. Like, well, which is okay, but like, but goddamn it, Batgirl. If that is true, I'm going. This game has way too many Batman exactly. characters in it already. There's, yeah. there's. Well, you know, why, right? Because Batman's characters. like the current Vogue cultural kind of like movies Thank came out recently. Everyone loves Batman. Blah blah blah. Be. Yeah. yeah, they'll sure, probably but... put Zod in because he's in the movie. Yeah. yeah. Just, just give me fucking... Show. Give me Zatanna. Give me Zatanna. Okay. And just Am I asking for a lot? No. <laughs> I'm just asking for yeah. Zatanna, so... I keep trying to think of characters from DC. I, I'm, I'm, sure I'm sure there's I at least think they one got, person uh, on the NetherRealm team that has the same sentiment as you, though. I, I think they got everyone that I could have wanted them to have. Eh. Realistically. Realistically. You know what? They put in Killer Frost. Everything is fucking realistic. Yeah. <laughs> well, they're probably like, so desperate for a female character, yeah. Yeah, but you know, if you, if they wanted a Sub Zero character like fucking Captain Cold, is yeah, a yeah. lot more cool. Or Mister Freeze. Not that you want to fucking put more Batman in there, right? Yeah, so, like fucking Sub Zero. Cold. Captain Cold with his uh, with his like um, Justice League costume. I'd be into that. <laughs> it's this blue parka. It's fucking amazing. I, it's kind of weird that they don't have a Shang Tsung kind of character. Uh, they do. They're just a morpher. <laughs> <They do? laughs> yes. So uh, he doesn't. It's not morphing, but I would say that Sinestro is the most like. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. so, so I'm reading through a list of has... comics characters, and on this list is Adolf Hitler. What do you think the chances are we get Adolf <laughs> Hitler? <laughs> They get him in there, but he's only like just the worst Joe character. And he can't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> just get he's yeah, the just heart gets the crap beat out of him. He can't even walk. <laughs> he's like even worse than Dan, if that was even possible. <laughs> I don't think he's much the worst character. Fighter, so. Injustice. Who's the worst character, uh, tire wise? I heard Carly Quinn is, and Cyborg is, are pretty fucking. Yeah, lame. they're like this whole game. Every Nether Realm game relies on like. How well you can. I thought Green Lantern face. was really shitty. I had, I had no luck. He's with Green good. At all. It's just that every fucking person is playing Green Lantern, so he's <laughs> already figured out. Like everyone knows everything about Green Lantern already. He's still I, good. I, it's I, just like I couldn't get anything going with Green Lantern. I sampled the whole roster, and I couldn't get anything going with yeah. him. Uh, I would say like Cyborg and Harley Quinn are kind of bad because they do like no damage, and they have. Uh. Like, Really low juggle potential, and I think next lowest would probably be Sinestro, because he's really good at zoning, but his damage output is shit. Like he can't get over thirty percent damage on anything. Kind of sad about Harley because I couldn't give any fucks about Cyborg. <laughs> but uh, I, I have oh, yeah. not liked what I've seen of Harley Quinn's designs, so it kind of doesn't surprise me if like playing as her isn't that great. I think. Top three right now are probably Aquaman is as usual. He's better than everybody, and then next two would probably be Raven and Killer Frost. Uh, so Shazam is how high? Uh, he probably high mid tier. Like he's good. He can good fight. It's just that he's not easy to use. Good enough. Give me a fucking classic costume, and I'm buying this game. <laughs> Because his new 52 design fucking sucks. Stupid hood. Yeah, I'm looking at some uh, some like tentative tier lists, some of which are complete nonsense made up by idiots, and some of which are look somewhat legit. And it generally seems to agree that like Cyborg and <laughs> uh, Harley Quinn are pretty much garbage, which is too bad. Yeah. Uh, 
Cyborg is kind of cool, I guess. No. So this, you've this all been playing too, your... Really good. Uh, yeah. So you've all been playing your okay comic book fighting game. I've been I've playing, playing Street Fighter 4. <laughs> I'm, play- I'm playing. MK9, I've, I've, been, I've been so. playing. I've been playing the greatest fighting game series ever created. Third Strike, Virtual Marvel Fighter. versus Capcom. Virtual Fighter. Yeah, uh, Marvel vs. Capcom. Evo. Smash Bros. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm, leave- I'm leaving this podcast out. right now. <laughs> I mean, I like Smash Brothers, but no one even joke around about that. that about hey, man, have a nice trip. <laughs> I'll trip you. Anyway. Thank you, thank you. So, yeah. Yeah. Virtual Fighter 4 Evolution. So, this is like what the total opposite. It, it yeah. is. This is like the total opposite of Injustice, where yeah, it's like all Gosh. about, like, it's about it's about getting one character that you, like, feel like, like, compatible with right yeah it's about finding one character that like meets your bio rhythm or something right <laughs> so like so so what character do you play as in vf4 because right now i've been meaning aoi uh I, I go i like i i always like pie and lao um uh, yeah. i like go akira i never really he's not he's not my guy I'm akira's tough guy. akira's tough to use yeah, like, which is really a shame because yeah. he is like the poster boy for the uh, for the franchise. Yet, yeah. like thinking that he is this game's Ryu is incorrect because uh, Sarah, a lot the, the inputs for his moves are really difficult. Like, he's he's a really hard hitter when you uh, when you uh, when you're able to use him effectively. But getting to that point is definitely harder than some. Yeah. So I played uh, Virtual Fighter One. mm Hmm. That's about it. I played as Kage, so how... I played too. How good would I be at, at Virtual Fighter 4? Probably like uh, probably Evo, like Evo win, Winner's Finals, right? <laughs> no. I mean, there's, I mean, there's I mean, definitely like, carryover. Yeah. Like, yeah, I mean, like it's, Kage not a, it's not a million miles away from those games. Yeah, yeah but like... Like, uh, like as saying that you played as Kage, I mean, like, uh, Kage was the first one that I, character I messed around with in VF4, and, and, and he's and he's not a bad character to start with, you know, because he's quick, he, his his moves are really easy to pull off. Mm-hmm. But like, uh, like, the reason I've been uh, playing as Aoi is because, like, uh, even even though I've not really been able to, like, use him effectively, but she has a a ton of reversals. Like, she's, uh, mm-hmm. like, she is able to reverse, like, uh, virtually every single, like, possible move. But, and also, like, she uh, utilizes a lot of grabs and throws. And the thing that, you know, uh, kind of going back to, like, which character just kind of clicks with you would kind of, like, uh, fits your style of play. Or just any sort of thing vis- visually or whatever about it that I like. I am into like Aoi because some of her uh, the sounds associated with her throws are just brutal, like breaking <laughs> bones. Is Shundi okay? It's just so silly because uh, just like seeing that, it's like uh, you you should not be able to get up after I just literally broke your arm. <laughs> like I I heard the bones crack. You should not be getting up after that. But, yeah. So it's just like Injustice. Well, they're not Here. superheroes, though. Where well, people or, or get hit by like, subway like, trains and have their necks or, broken and get up perfectly fine. Or, or, or it's like the x-ray moves in MK9, you know, just like... Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Just like freezing God, your those, spleen those and crushing it. brutal, man. Yeah, th- those were just gnarly, man. So is there, is there still, uh, like, moon gravity, or are they, like, made it normal? Uh, they, it is that, it is it is much more normal than okay because VF one is like, like insane there's like still, moon gravity yeah no it's not that there's that's still it's definitely there's not still a, there's still a bit of floating in okay. this uh, yeah. like both in jumping and uh, jumping and, and of course the the concept of you know like bouncing your enemy off the ground and then mm. doing like this sort of combos you know that, that well, obviously well, obviously that that all looks silly no matter which way you spin it but you know that's all but that's just the core part of that game that you that's know, just like, how three d fighters yeah. work it's yeah with not balance and juggles. imagine hitting somebody so hard at the ground that they bounce back up like god talk about brutal like the human yeah. body just doesn't do that right so well, what so what is wwe I... all the time well, so what I've been <laughs> in VF4 what I've been spending the most time doing is just going through quest mode which is to yeah. you know, is, so like level. so like there are two versions of VF4. There's regular VF4 and then there's VF4 uh, Evolution, 
And evolution is where they introduce the idea of the quest mode, which is a sort of like you're going to different arcades and challenging against different, you know, like AI controlled uh, players, some of which uh, have their like AI modeled after actual like uh, virtual fighter players. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. You, can, that's you, pretty, yeah. you can go to, you can, you, they actually are real arcades. They have Sega Land and, or Sega Town or whatever it there, is. There's a lot of Club Segas. Yeah, Club Sega and, uh, What's the other famous one that's in there? Oh man, which one? They're all I real mean, they're, arcades. I mean, there's an event as square. Far, as far I, as I know, they're all real arcades. <laughs> um, yeah, but, but but that's really cool. And you and the cool part about that is that you do you'll be doing fine. You'll be like moving along, and you'll beat like ten or eleven in a row, and you'll run into somebody who just absolutely kicks your ass up one side and down the other. There's always and someone like, who's like a who's like a couple ranks ahead of you. In fact, like just like yesterday, you know, I was like right now my current rank is eighth Dan and I ran into one who's like a uh, guy who a uh, Jeffrey that was a rank destroyer <laughs> and he just fucking kicked my ass. That sounds like a good rank to have. Like a destroyer. Yeah. Work. Yeah, and, and, and I think the People ones that have well. those specific kind of titles, like Destroyer or Slayer or whatever, I, th- I think those are the characters that have their AI modeled after actual players because oh, they were doing thing they were doing things that I had not seen any of the other AI do. <laughs> like they did they like I I saw them actually pull off tech rolls, which like none of the other AI did. Which I think a really cool idea. I'd love to see that in more fighting games, like they kind of modeled I after. Yeah. Five Honestly, I don't think any of that actually works. I know I don't think it works either. But it's, it's idea. all all that is is basically like a flag on the AI saying like yeah. do this more often. Fa- favorite more, bro. More, more than. <laughs> I, I think just Soul Calibur okay, Five. This is I, I, mean, I mean, the tech rules thing was just an exa- example, but it's just part of the whole thing where like these characters were like uh, doing way more uh, stuff than uh, than I saw the other characters doing. But like, it's it's really cool. Like, it's a pretty good like single player. It's a good way of like giving you a sense of progression because you're actually going up in rank and doing different quest orders which require you to do, fulfill certain conditions you know like uh, you know like e- successfully evading attacks or landing a certain amount of counter hits or or grabbing someone when they're in a guaranteed throw state like it's it's really good and i've actually yeah, you know, I, I mean, I've already liked Virtual Fighter for a while now, but I, but I liked it only just because of like the stuff that I was able to f- see on the, on on the surface. You know, like the in, the the window that you have for inputting in moves and stuff. It was way like th- just this last week of playing through it, I've been able to better appreciate the the in depth stuff. So just before still, before we move, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, yeah, I was just saying, oh, still, yeah. still, still holds up as a great game. And, it's probably, it's probably yeah. and, it's still, and it still has the best tutorial mode in any fighting game. Yeah. I mean, I know <laughs> VF5 Final Showdown is supposed to have one, but Those it's not as good. Whatever. Yeah. I, I don't even know if that is actually a yeah, patent. I, I don't know either. I know they have they have interactive, Namco has interactive blowing screens. Yeah. Anyway, before we move on from fighting games, I think that to go back to the idea of like pro style AI, like not obviously not necessarily to make them like as good as pros because of course that's never going to happen, but to kind of teach mm-hmm. a player to overcome different types of play, right? Like someone who's focusing yeah. entirely on grappling and you're getting destroyed by it, you're like, okay, I need to learn how to distance myself, right? Or a guy who's focusing on projectile spam, you need to learn how to clo- you know, to rush down, etc. I think it's a great way to kind of for a more, it's not, it's not like the intro yeah. level, like learn the moves. It's more of a like, here's some stuff you might actually encounter online. So kind of get used to these different styles of playing the game. But it's just that tutorial mode in in specific that really does a good job of just teaching you the basics. And when you really think about it, you know, because like v- Virtual Fighter just has like this horrible, like preconceived notion from people that it is super complex and hard to get into. It's not. Well, same it is not. Uh, same with Dota. There you go. <laughs> It, it is complex, but it's not hard to get into. I it, mean, it's, it's like yeah, really, when you really, just have, like when said, you really like look, kick and defend. Like, when you really look at the at the mechanics that run that entire game, when you understand that, it's almost completely trivial. Yeah, but so is any fighting game if you have the analytical ability to do so. But you know, yeah. not not everything. But, but like, there's, but there's, but there's nothing. But everything is like super concrete and clear. There's nothing yeah. ambiguous. Like there's there's no sort of like so hard to read like sort of cross up stuff and frame counting and all that. But yeah, it would be a fighting game if it wasn't. So, I mean, yeah. like I've not had to do much frame counting or anything. It's just no. understanding the fundamentals oh, that that's... you really go farther. You yeah. don't really have to know frame counts to actually be good at fighting games. 
Yeah, like obviously, uh, if you have a general idea of frame counts, it generally helps. Like if you're playing Arcana Heart and you know you have a zero frame move, like it's a pretty good way to stop somebody from doing anything. Uh, which is yeah. only, I think there's only one of those, but it's pretty good. Uh, I want to play the new Dark Everyone, Fighters if it's actually coming out. I don't actually know. Everyone like play Virtual games. Fighter. You owe it to yourselves. Right. Next, you want I, to... I have way too many fighting games already. Next, you want to talk about uh, some of the three games you played, or are we... Uh, sure, I'll, I'll, go over and, I'll go over them briefly, just to, to All save right. time. Uh, Tales of Grace is F, pretty good. Uh, not the best Tales game. Difficulty is off the fucking charts. Uh, wow. not, not like it's hard, but it's like erratic. Like, I can crush normal encounters, no problem. And then you get to a boss, and he just one-shots your allies. And then if you, you resurrect them with a life bottle, and he just turns and one-shots them immediately. And you're like, this isn't even Sounds a difficulty yeah. thing. This is just him one-shotting anyone who's not me, because I can actually guard and defend. And I've tried different Sounds strategies yeah. with AI. I've tried manually switching. It's like, I, I have no problem killing the bosses, because I just fight them solo and don't take damage. But, man, it's just it's so fucking stupid. Like, this, he just turns and one-shots them every time. Maybe I'm playing... Yeah, okay. I don't know. I'm playing on hard or whatever, but... Even taking it down to yeah, easy. Yeah. It kind of reminds me of Hyperdimension Neptune Mark II near the yeah. end. Like, the <laughs> boss is just one shotting you, and it just seems unfair, like just a ridiculous spike. Well, it's not even turn based, right? It's real time. And so, like, you know, you'll he'll resurrect someone. I'll, he'll be fo- The boss will be focusing on me. I'll be fighting him with my sword or whatever. And then he'll just turn oh, away, yeah, but... shoot a laser, and turn back. And I'm like, great. What a fucking well, yeah. useful fight. Yeah, it's, it's, speci- it's specifically the on hit KO yeah. stuff that's just frustrating. Yeah. Aside from that, though, the game is really, really cool. Some of the There's some really in depth mechanics with, uh, t- like, leveling up your skills and your gear that's really fascinating. And, and uh, it's just sad that the, uh, the combat's such a complete nonsense. Anyway, yeah. uh, moving on from that, Dragon's Dogma, uh, playing a little bit of the uh, Dark Arisen. <laughs> Can't say much about it, so I've only been playing the, I've been replaying it, so I haven't gotten to anything new yet. But hey, it's still mm. a good game. Uh, Is there anything substantial changed? Apparently there's a bunch, like a hundred new items and a bunch of other shit, I have no fucking idea. Also, it's like from... gameplay-wise? No, no, it's still got that, uh, it's still got that weird letterbox, uh, the shadows are still completely weird. Um, I wish the quest system was revamped. Completely. Uh, I mean, having the infinite fast travel is pretty fucking good, but that's only because I have the original as well. Um, I mean, because, I don't know, I didn't play a lot of Dragon's Dogma, but that game has the worst side quest since Nier. I don't think it's as bad as Nier. It's Does it still do the thing where your your squad mates just constantly yell out like? Oh, they made them less. He's fucking... illy. He can't use fire magic, and I need to use physical attacks. Is it still <laughs> like that? Because that was just hilarious. To uh, yeah, you still hear about all roads leading to Grand Soren, and you still hear a lot of like, "Master, fire is effective against them." You know, yeah. uh, <laughs> so it's a lot less than the original game. Although, uh, what's not less than the original game is "Master works all, you can't go wrong," <laughs> which of course <laughs> every single time. Oh, wow, the blacksmith, pretty much. I mean, it's not actually every single time, but it might as well be. Um, is the fantasy system working now? I, 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 I could. The first time I heard that, I was laughing so hard. I was like, what the fuck is this shit? <laughs> it's really interesting to look at that game, especially playing so much Dark Souls, because it's it's they're they're obviously not... They're very different, but they're also kind of... They're both medieval fantasy games about going on this adventure and fighting monsters. But the one really major thing that's different between them is that in Dark Souls, it's super quiet. No one's ever talking to you. Yeah. You yeah. Talk, yeah. talk to people, they're very succinct and just kind of say a couple things. In Dragon's Dog, no one ever shuts up. It's constant talking. Uh-huh. Unless you're playing alone, in which case the enemies are just yelling at you constantly. Well, you're... well, well I, saw, I saw that launch trailer and they had another character and that means Dark Souls 2 is going to have all these cutscenes in it and yeah. it's going to have an easy mode too. Obviously. <laughs> Some guy was posting on NeoGAF about they wanted invasions allowed during a boss battle and I was like, yes, that's fucking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't they have that in Demon Souls? Wasn't there one boss that yeah, was yeah, the old the old monk uh, basically would summon a PvP battle for you, which is really funny because if you just uh, if you stood right in the fog where the the player would come in, you could just insta kill them every time with a backstab. It was amazing. <laughs> just telefrag them. And obviously, I would. Nice. Just, you know. I, although I played in the Japanese version, so the lot of players are really good, uh, or rather the Chinese version. Um, I have no idea how it was like in America because I beat the game like two years before it came out. Uh, but Demon's Souls is also excellent. Uh, I should go back and play that, but it's not on a PC, so... Eh. What else? Uh, last game, much. Soul Sacrifice. Now, here's the game I can actually talk about. Uh, not really, because I've only played a demo, but it's the game that I'm most uh, interested in, certainly. So, Soul Sacrifice, 
So it's a game where you basically just fight bosses. People compare it to Monster Hunter, which is about it's about as similar to Monster Hunter as I don't know, Fan Star Online is, which is not very trying to fill the void left behind on Sony handhelds, not in Monster Hunters and Nintendo yeah, things. I'm trying to find something to compare it to, but it's very fast paced, very actiony. You still it's I don't know. Uh it's almost like a third person shooter with some melee. Because uh you, you basically so if you don't know anything about the game, it's kind of like uh, based around this idea of you are a, a sorcerer and you're sent on these missions to hunt sorcerers who have turned into giant monsters. Yeah, whatever. The story's actually really cool. But I'm not going to go into depth of the lore right here. Um, it, it was originally based on like Arthurian legend with Merlin and um, uh, Morgan Le Fay. Lady Merlin. Yeah. Morgan Le Fay. There you go. Anyway, uh, so you, the way you cast spells is by you have these things called offerings, and you get offerings by completing missions. Uh, destroying different boss parts, kind of like Monster Hunter. You know, you break his arms, you get the arm offering, or whatever it is. And each offering grants you a different kind of ability. So one might be, it turns your arm into a giant fist that you can punch a guy with. Uh, or another one might be some... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Sounds pretty fucking sick. Uh, it turns your arm into a fist. <laughs> oh, God, if only I had that power to myself. I need the arm to do it for me. Giant can I turn my leg into a foot? It is, a, it is actually just a big giant's fist. It's called Giant's Fist, so go ahead and look it up. You <sighs> should just turn the entire body into a fist. I know. Just, uh, uh, just go all Shin Mods and go. Herself. Anyway, the point is, like, some, some offering you'll use <laughs> giant rock to create a little plant that you can eat fruit from to get a buff, or uh, you can turn into a golem, or you can summon a golem, or you can attract enemies' attention, like aggro. A lot of different stuff. The kind of the cool mechanic, of course, is that when you use your offerings, each one has a limited use. And you can use it one more time than that limited use, but it will break permanently. And uh, yeah, the ba- the basic premise of Soul Sacrifice is you you kind of like you choose your offerings, and each boss has elemental weaknesses, elemental strength, certain you know different uh, tactics work better on some than others. Like if it's a slow moving boss, you can summon a golem who will sit in the ground and pound him, which does tons of damage. But if he's running around at top speed, you won't be doing anything useful. And then four player online multiplayer, tons of fun, whatever. Uh, it's pretty cool. I highly recommend. If you have a Vita, there's, it's not like you're going to be playing anything else. So just buy Soul Sacrifice. It's, it's excellent. Uh, what are you talking I, about? There's there's going to be some Neptunia games coming out for the Vita. Well, yeah, in this country? Or, or in this half of the world? Like, <laughs> I don't know, but that might be a, re- a good reason for me to get one. Exactly. There well, actually, if you're just now getting a Vita, there's actually a ton of... Oh, yeah, there's tons of... Uh, and, and, like, PS1 classics? Like, if you haven't played yeah. those games, you're... Oh, mm-hmm. It's a great system for that. Plus indie games like um, what's that one? I know uh, Nicholas did one. Yeah, Guacamole as well as uh, uh, Knit Underground uh, by the guy who did uh, Knit Stories, Night Sky, Syra, Niflis is the guy's name. He's quite a talented indie developer. I really like a lot of his stuff. And sure. I'll check that out. I recommend checking it out. It's also on PC, uh, Steam Greenlight, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Speaking of Steam, PC, yep. and indie games... Steam Greenlight, go vote up Divekick um, so they can get on... Yeah. And, uh, and speaking of games that are already out, <laughs> me and Nyx have been... And Coffee, to some extent, we've been playing Monaco. It's pretty good. It's awesome. I, 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 just, I definitely I, want to hear more about that. Do I, don't know how, I don't know where to start. Play or... I don't know. I, just, I know that the gist of it is like it's it's basically a heist game, right? Yeah. So it's a top-down game, kind of like think of like a link to the past controls, basically, right? You know what? Think about uh, so Pac-Man, Hotline Miami, yeah, and Pac-Man, Hit- Hotline Miami. You said, yeah, you said Hotline Miami, and that I'm I'm not listening. The music is great, but not it's not like Hotline Miami, but it is the. Pro- no, no, it's it's kind of like well, this, never uh, mind then. It's it's kind of like this jazzy. This thing kind of vibe. It's kind like of like, ragtime music. It's silent. It's like silent movie heist music. Like when you yeah 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 like, like, like this thing with Paul like Newman fast, and fast piano and uh, Redford. Yeah, it's it's awesome, and it, and it changes depending on what you're doing. So if you, you know, if you grab all of the stuff you need to steal, the heist music speeds up for your escape. If you get caught, it obviously crescendos. It's really well designed. The game in, uh, in general is extremely well designed. Yeah. Um, mm. a little tough to get through some of the levels with two people, but doable. Uh, like as we. Proved. Yeah, as so we proved by doing all this, the, all the first campaign yeah. levels uh, with two people. So there's no, there's no like you can't have the the computer controlled any of the other characters. No, no, no. no. The... If you die, if you're playing single player, and you die, you actually can't 
you actually have to switch to a different character, but yeah. no, there's no AI, AI companions, okay. which is good because I don't, I can't imagine playing that game with a shitty yeah. AI companion. <laughs> like, like there's just so many variables going on that it'd be hard for yeah, yeah. just AI to keep up. One of the things I really like. Well, I mean, there's variables because uh, actually the game is kind of schematic and it's absolutely possible to make a perfect heist when you never get caught but it's kind of I, I don't know I like the frenetic pace of it yeah. I like fucking up like it's, it's not like we're in you know Hitman it's like oh, I fucked up time to reload it's more like yeah, yeah, fucked yeah. up let's just run around and get as much gold as I can without dying and find somewhere to hide um, yeah. which is generally how me and Ghost play uh, which gets yeah. but when we and Ghost play it's a lot of oh shit I died the other guy goes and hides for a while then tries to resurrect you for five minutes yeah. uh, it's a lot of fun though I'm definitely interested in trying it with four people if I can ever manage to get four people together to play it. But uh, unlike coffee, I don't have this huge stable of friends with one. Yeah, friends. real friends, yeah. Oh, I've, I've played it four players so many times. I know, I'm so jealous. Yeah, go suck a dick, then. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, don't want to spoil it if you haven't gotten there, but have you gotten to the final level of the first campaign? No. Okay, well, I won't tell you anything about it. Then. It is, it is yeah. very cool. Um, yeah. And fuck you. We had a lot of fun. <laughs> what I like about the game is that it's pretty well balanced with the characters. Like, I was afraid that when we initially were playing, I was afraid that the mole, the lookout, and the gentleman are going to be fucking overpowered to, mm -hmm. to no end. Like, the mole seemed extremely over the top. Well, the way I would describe it, which I think is really cool, is that whenever you play a different character, you always feel like the character you're playing is totally broken and just, like, is able to do everything. Yeah. And you're like... Man, this character's so overpowered in this situation, but then you get to one where, like, I need to get this gold from in front of a guy, and unless I'm the gentleman, I just can't do it. So then you're like, oh, gentleman would be really good here. Meanwhile, you're playing as a gentleman, you can't get by this camera, you're like, fuck, I should have played the hacker. It's, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. All the characters kind of being valuable. Um, except for the lookout, because, like, she's, I mean, she's really good, but if you are careful enough, you don't need to see the enemies on the map. So I feel although, like. Kind of the the, although the lookout makes it really e a lot easier. Especially the latter levels, when the, 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 where the place is just flowing with uh, with people, mm -hmm. it would just really help you to have that insight. And the pickpocket is kind of situational. Yeah, I definitely I'm not like the pickpocket and the locksmith particularly. I'm just not too sure on because the mole is basically the locksmith, but he doesn't he leaves the door open permanently because he has to dig through the wall beside it. Like it's just I can see the locksmith being useful because he can open the safes and yeah. the jewel cases a lot faster. That's true. Like, all of these characters would shine if we, for example, had a team of four. For example, the pickpocket, if he had three people to back him up, would be awesome. Because I imagine for speedrunning, he's excellent because yeah, he have to yeah, run around and get clear the goal. fucking level in the, yeah, exactly. the second. Like, 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 the red is, for example, situational in the way that she is mostly to she's mostly there to take other people from, out of a pickle because she can uh, charm alerted, alerted enemies. So, you could, so she can just save someone's ass from getting killed mm -hmm. or... Uh, or take a guy who is in an inconvenient place out of the commission. It's it's really well designed. It's really so. Fun. So, coffee. Since you played with four people, how did you find it? Yeah. Kind of like, uh, if you want to do good, you have to have like a really coordinated team of four people. Because hmm. the group I've been playing with, we have three guys who are pretty okay at the game, and, and we you. have one guy who fucks up all the time. <laughs> Which is you. So me and the two <laughs> other guys will yeah. like be planning out this elaborate like plan to like all right we have a mole and the mole is going to dig behind the wall behind the safe and the locksmith's going to open the safe and the lookout will be up against the wall looking for guards and all of a sudden you'll have the fourth guy the hacker will come running he's like help guys i'm being caught and 20 <laughs> guards are chasing after him <laughs> and of course he runs right into you so you're gonna he runs you. right into us and we need a benny hill theme uh, to play as guys just running with the guards on his tail <laughs> well i mean the music is basically the benny hill theme but just piano so yeah I mean, it makes All the right, game more awesome. fun, but it's also at times frustrating when you're like, God damn it, we had this shit planned <laughs> out, and you just fucked it all up. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Which honestly you. makes for a better game, in my opinion. It does. Like, the best because times we had with Nyx was... I yeah. had with Nyx was when shit just fell apart. Well, the the best thing is that you can always recover from it. Like, you're never yeah. permanently yeah. fucked. As long as you can hide, you can, you can wait it out, and you can get back to kind of um, the, I guess, whatever you want to call it, equilibrium. Hmm. No, once you get like, once you start planning out the heists, like seeing where the mole can dig behind and yeah. like what the hacker can hack and shit like that, it actually becomes a lot more fun. 
I think maximizing speed with a with a bunch of really good players would be really interesting. Just to yeah. like kind of figure out the the optimal run through the level. Like some guys have some pretty incra- insane times already. Yeah. So, yeah. like I say, I'm pretty. It's pretty impressive that they managed to make a game where no one is truly overpowered. Yeah. Because so, I mean, is... like, obviously we're not like you know at the level where we can really judge balance. But sure, sure, sure. But it seems it is... like no one's that good that you just obviously choose. Yeah. Right. Even the mole, there are situations where he simply cannot do everything. Mm-hmm. Like, can make it easier, but... There's no Aquaman. Like, the levels are designed in such a <laughs> way. Like, they're all they're all really well designed. And a lot, and sometimes, you know, you'll play, play in the mole, and you'll want to dig somewhere, and you'll find that, oh, the guys can't dig here, because the level's designed around it. Or you, you always just... want to dig with the mole. I know, you always want to dig. I, I always want to play the mole. He's, he's amazing. I like playing with the gentleman. Mostly because he's... There are, there are, there are at least a few levels in the first campaign where you could just... Where you can just strut through half of the level and no one just bars you and you're just collecting gold and no one gives a shit. Like the like the Ocean Oceanarium is pretty cool. Go- it's pretty cool in this regard. Yeah, definitely. Like the first level is basically a ton of guys and I was I remember playing with a gentleman and like Nix is running around trying to avoid people and just walking around and just fucking <laughs> hi there. <laughs> I was a nothing without a care in the world. Like it's, I definitely it's found really the, cool. the cleaner was also excellent in a couple of the earlier levels. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah. You just walk into a room, instantly stun the guy, and take the gold and walk away. Nice. Man, I want to play a four four player game. I know. Game sounds cool. It is. It is very cool. Also, Thief totally stole the game subtitle as its tagline in the trailer. What's really? yours is mine. Wow. No. Yeah. Are they oh shit. This? Yeah, yeah, you're right. Oh, God. Which oh is even God. better because of the official thread for Monaco on on Neo yeah, you know, They come Garrett. up with a funny stuff. That's what's yours is mine, Garrett. <laughs> <laughs> well, the way the four is going, it looks like Monaco might be. Uh... Yeah, they, it might be the only one to actually get released with that <laughs> subtitle. So. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Man, thief. What's yours is mine. <sighs> Who's making? It would it's make me hate that game even more. It's not a bad tagline for something that is about stealing, but yeah, that that's already also, been taken. It, well, that's why it makes it sense to steal. If you're going to steal, that's I the guess, thing to steal. Yeah, it got me there. The thing about yeah, stealing. I guess. Maybe, maybe Thief got the last laugh in that case. I don't know. <laughs> hey, Thief, know, the game has, stole the game our has, subtitle. <laughs> well, I mean, it's going to be a AAA game. Whatever, and it's right? not going to make money, so I guess uh, Monica probably got the last laugh. <laughs> yeah. You might be whatever. Right. Whatever. Thief hasn't come out yet, so we can't really say for sure. But still. Yeah, but it's not gonna. If, if, well, it depends who's publishing it. So they expect like if they're like going Square Enix style and expect several million sales for like Hitman. You know, I don't know, man. I'm, I'm sure that, like the people on the Ido side probably don't think that, but I would not be surprised if Square Enix. Yeah. Would still think that. Or, or I, I don't know. I mean, like Doichi Wada isn't there anymore. So don't worry, guys. Like... Final Fantasy Thirteen Three is totally gonna be uh, making all the money. Yeah. And I love Final Fantasy XIII too. Damn it! I have the fucking platinum in XIII too, so I like Final Fantasy. But I just—they're uh, not—they're not making up for the lack in the West, you know. All right, yeah. let's talk. Let's move on from Monaco and let's talk about PID and let's move on to some All right, news. PID. So Red and Black, you had some caustic things to say about PID, and by caustic, yeah. I, you said you didn't like it. <laughs> but... No, I absolutely hated that game. Oh, you mean you love it? Yeah. Not so, so why much. did you? That's it? the most caustic thing. <laughs> The repulsion tractor beam mechanic <clears throat> is my least favorite mechanic in all of platformers, <laughs> and this game is just that. I mean, this was like, I, I can't stand it. The the repulsor levels in Super Meat Boy were like my least favorite part of that game. I, I, I It's just not, it's not a fun mechanic to me. Mm. I wish I could be more specific as to why I hate it. I, I, maybe it's, it just feels like you're just completely out of control for however long that is. I also, just watching... Actual. Yeah, and also just watching your character like float across the screen slowly while you're not touching anything on the controller <laughs> is just really boring to me. I don't know, but I I can't stand those games. I mean, not not those. I mean, not those games. Like, yeah, yeah, a bunch yeah. of them. But I hate you're that weird. mechanic. Yeah. yeah. Pid is just that mechanic. So I, I, like I uh, yeah, I finished the game and I played halfway through on hard, and uh, I thought it was really good. I'm liking Pit so far, but I but even on easy, that game seems like no one really play tested it ever. Oh, it's totally fine. I don't know. It just it depends if you expect to die zero times or expect to die a few times in every puzzle. It's just you know what's gonna happen. It just seems like that. 
there's weird there's weird stuff like the checkpointing is kind of weird. Mm. Like it's pretty brutal, that's for sure. You said that it really charmed you. Like what about it charmed you? Well, you said, I really like the art style and style. the music. Yeah. The atmosphere is tremendous and the way it looks is just beautiful. I would like to see a movie or an adventure game in that art style. It's fucking like, beautiful. The cave seemed like it was going in that direction but not not really. Yeah, it's it's really pretty. And it has a great and it's some great music. It's, it's it's a charming game, and I and I don't, I like the gameplay. I just think it's not maybe it's not going to be as groundbreaking for yeah. me as other platformers were. I tell you, like on hard mode at least, the execution required for the even the beginning puzzles is ex- like extreme. Like we're not like, which, there's there's no room for error. Which seems kind of crappy with the with the way the game controls. Like it's kind of floaty, uh, and I don't really see yeah. that. I didn't have a problem. Like later on, some of the puzzles are like really nuts. Like, like even like speed based. Like you've got to get over lasers, and you're you're dropping more beams from the beam you're in, and jumping from beam to beam. Like, mm. I, I didn't have a problem doing it. Like I'm not like some amazing fucking pro gamer or something, but I didn't I didn't get stuck in any parts of the game more than like three or four times, except for maybe the the bosses. But no, yeah, the bosses are kind of that, that third boss is. I think the third boss. It, well, the first boss is the waiter. Is the one where you drop food into the mouth? Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, that one was really easy. The B- balloon bandit was a little bit harder, and the the, last- the balloon bandit had the problem that it expected me to like that. that technically, that boss can be done in the on. Un- yeah, it's pretty tight execution, like the whole throw, game. Throw, throw. A- and we're back after that completely planned and not at all abrupt uh, end. And we're gonna wrap the show up with some news, which isn't there isn't really a lot to talk about. It's mostly gonna be about the Nintendo E3 press conference, and we're gonna le- read some email, actually an email. <laughs> so, Nintendo is apparently not doing a E3 conference this year. Big news. I hope it's I because they're spending news. time making Wii U games. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that'd be nice. You think maybe the the two hours of that press conference they need to finish up their 3D Mario game? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's what I call crunch time. Guys, guys, we, we need every we need, we need every minute we can yeah, get. Even Reggie has to do crunch time. Guys, it's it's yeah. still launch window. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Maybe that's what it is. Maybe they'll just do their press conference like six weeks later and say, no, it was still in the E3 window. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, the press conference window. I mean, Microsoft the press conference on, window, the, guys. on the end of that, the whole like console announcement window, if that's what they're doing on the 24th. E3 after party. Um, so, who knows? Maybe Nintendo will just announce a new console that's actually uh, modern. But I, I think this was this was like... I don't know if this is maybe the the most recent way or the first thing, but this is like you know when they when they announced the Wii U, they were like, "We're gonna make it's for you guys." Like they were talking to, the, to all the people at E3. This is the thing that you guys wanted. We've heard your complaints, and this is for you. And now they're saying like, "You motherfuckers didn't even buy it, so fuck you. We're not even gonna try this." <laughs> hey, at least they, they, they everything you wanted and you didn't buy yeah, it. You know, so fuck you. Yeah, but it's classic Nintendo. Like if that conference happened. Like I don't know, three years ago, it would be awesome. But no, they just they re- they released the Wii U at the worst fucking moment possible. Probably. Well, it's, I mean, maybe it's they essentially the last gen console in the current generation, right? Yeah. Like, I don't... Yeah. Like the Wii was kind of the same, but it actually had a good enough gimmick to oh, push it. I don't know if I call that a good enough gimmick, man. But uh, <laughs> okay, it certainly had a gimmick. gimmick. It had one that sold, and that's what made it. Yeah, 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 yeah. good enough marketing. Gimmick. Yeah. Gimmick. It gave it the staying power it needed in a market dominated by, essentially, consoles focused on games. And this time around, they're like, hey, we're going to focus on games, uh, and we didn't, I mean, we didn't focus on the mass market focused, appeal. Yeah. We're going to focus on games, but not enough, because we haven't made the console Maybe strong enough to actually sustain the new generation. Dumb like, tablet it. thing. Like, excuse me? Like, like whatever. The fucking tablet is so stupid. Uh, I have a Wii U, and I just don't give a shit about the tablet. Yeah, I can play Monster Hunter in bed. Who fucking cares? <laughs> Who but it seems like cares? that is the main the main selling point of like, that tablet. I, I like understand. Everybody... It's, yeah, I don't know. It must be. It's like it must be like an old guy with a family thing, you know. Like for me, as a as a guy who lives alone with his girlfriend, it's like it's just irrelevant. I don't know. Um, so, and I, I, I know average gaming age is like thirty seven or some shit. I'm only twenty one. Yeah, yeah. Fuck yeah. man. 
still, I think the fact that Nintendo is abstaining from the whole fucking dog and pony show is actually good for the for the industry. Yeah, because like these all do to to take yeah. people back from the kind of sensationalism that. Yeah. Lot you know, we all know how it's go- how that's gonna end. How these conferences gonna look? Yeah, Microsoft's conference is gonna be absolute shit. <laughs> a new Sony ship with magic fell. You can watch live streams of NFL on your Xbox. Yeah, this is going to be it, and you can all you can do it all the time because your Xbox is gonna be always online. Yeah, and then you know, then you got PS4, which is gonna be like, do you live in a world? Where every action is seen by the government. Yeah, they're just <laughs> well, like, gonna, they're gonna all, drop a thousand love, games on you, and I would love to have a press conference be just the creative leads for all their games, talking yeah. about their high-minded philosophical bullshit. I would love that. I want to see. So they're not gonna do back. that. Yeah. I, I don't know. I kind of don't know what Sony is going to do because they already shot their wad on yeah. everything with their new system. They're going to show the box, I guess. Yeah, yeah. yeah they're going to show the box and they're going to show more games. Yeah. Which is why they'll win because exactly. Microsoft is already fucking themselves up by, by making a big conference uh, before E3. Yeah. If that conference bombs, I mean, they're did the fucked. same thing. But no, Sony no, no, did no. the same yeah, thing. But so, yeah, but the problem is Sony actually got people excited and early this year. Yeah, Microsoft is doing a conference in fucking May, and the, and the the time difference at three and weeks yeah. maybe before E three, and if that conference bombs, like the, if they do anything to displease their fans, like the always online bullshit, yeah. that E three conference is gonna be a disaster. It's gonna be damage control. I feel like Microsoft is already doing damage control because of the silence yeah. after the PS4 announcement. They just had nothing. They had nothing to say. They're like, oh, whatever. Yeah. And they had that asshole Adam Worth go on about, oh, I, I don't buy a vacuum cleaner because my power might go out. Like, yeah, nice one, asshole. Yeah. <laughs> don't go on I, your not... career might go out. Um, but yeah, no. <laughs> I mean, I'm not as worried about the always online thing as much as everybody else, especially because I've heard so many things like different ways. Like the latest thing I heard was that DRM is only going to be it's going to be like a publisher level decision. Uh, yeah. Well, you know what? I'm actually scared about the online always online bullshit, especially after yesterday. Like, well, yeah, Nick's would yeah. kind of have. <laughs> Well, yeah, I don't think like Xbox 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 internet. Stuff. No, I, I mean I have a 360, but I just I mostly use PS3. I'm There's no fucking a, one of those, you know, uh, like I've said before, one of those uh, weeaboo losers who watch like <laughs> watch anime and all that all that lame shit. Uh, so I'm a big fan. Like in Japan, like I mean they had a lot of presence on the Xbox at the beginning because Microsoft threw a ton of money at it with a lot of um, like the cave shooters and some RPGs like Tales of Vesperia. But uh, they like Xbox has no traction in Japan. And yeah, and not as is much traction it, that, now. So, it won't is have. that still the case in Japan that they have absolutely? Oh nothing? yeah, I heard that they had made nothing. tiny steps towards it with Final Fantasy and, and a bunch of other. Yeah, stuff, like I said, they they so. pushed really hard for it at the beginning of the generation, but all I've ever heard is that from there they just gave up. They're like, fuck, yeah. there is no no presence. Like in Japan, console is just PS3 and maybe the Wii U, but I wouldn't necessarily put that on the PSP because. Oh yeah, well, yeah, handhelds are totally different. They are way yeah, yeah, there. yeah but yeah. anything that has uh, Monster, Monster Hunter. Hunter. Yep, yeah, 3DS and is huge. And, it's a Monster Hunter and Brain Train or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the whole things that like aren't games. I mean, if you want to make games, I don't know that Japan really is like you need to have that market yeah. locked down. Oh, you're right, you're right. Monster Hunter. Hunter is not a game; it's a fucking masterpiece. <laughs> Just Monster like Xenosaga. Um, yeah, I don't know. Xenosaga is at least delusional about its masterpiece status. Yeah, Monster it's Hunter, it's... I don't even know what they're trying to do with that shit. So, I'm actually glad, as I said, I'm glad that Nintendo is not going to have a conference because it's a good step. Because yeah. if... They don't need to do anything. They just need to put in games. There's nothing they can say that's going to make yeah. someone happy about it, right? They can't. They're like, look, you already announced a shit ton of games. Just put those games out. You can't announce them again. And these conferences were never entertaining in a different way than well, oh, is pretty- cool games and be oh, this host is really shitty. Yeah. I thought they were entertaining in that weird kind of like what 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 on earth would Nintendo think we want? Yeah, like what is Nintendo's <laughs> idea of crowd pleasing oh, entertainment? God. Let's see that. So remember bad. when they brought out with the with the guy with Wii music when he was just doing the air drums with the mohawk? <laughs> you remember that guy? Yeah, it's like yeah. you. Somebody looked at this guy and said, "We need to put him in front of a large group of it's people last, right? with we're a just... spotlight on him." Hey, I still, you know, like uh, the Arkham Asylum guys, Arkham Asylum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. Or sorry, Arkham still, City. My apologies. Arkham Asylum's actually a good game. Oh, uh, Arkham City's pretty. Arkham good. City's totally fine too. But I, I, still, you know, like Nintendo has crowd pleasers. Like they can announce shit like a like a new Mario game, but like new as in 
Sunshine and Galaxy new and shit, and they're gonna have a great response like they did with announcing Twilight Princess and they had with Donkey Kong Returns. So yeah, but the 3DS version apparently fucking sucks, which is too bad. So I want to play the game, um, but. 25 I mean, or some shit. Yeah. All right. Anything else if about? Had, if they had trotted out a new 3D Mario game, that would have been like they would have won the show. Yeah. You know. Of course. Which I hope they will do. Yeah. Because Galaxy is, uh, was awesome, and I want a new game that is going to be as I don't know amazing as Galaxy. I don't know. It's paper. also it's also just part of I mean like the the you know not to get too wrapped up in whatever culture is but it's also just part of the thing like I, I like having that kind of three horse race like you know three way fight who's going to win E3 you know I mm-hmm. like having the competition it's fun to just sit on the sides and watch these three like titans of industry like yeah, try but, and try you know, and narrow cast such sure, a, but just at, a yeah. weird market the last 3 years were really disappointing in this regard mm-hmm. like xbox has been has been uh con- concentrating on the wrong shit all the time well or, or the right shit right maybe they want a different market and that's a more lucrative yeah, or the, yeah, yeah, but, yeah, yeah no, not the right shit for the, us right but the, yeah yeah well i mean i'm a, i like if if they could actually work out an nfl deal where i could watch every nfl game on my 360 mm-hmm. and didn't have to pay 350 dollars <laughs> to do that and order a pizza yeah <laughs> at the same I time mean, that's yeah yeah I mean, but, but like for real, that's that's like an appealing thing to me. Like I mean, that would be half time cool during the that. game, and a pizza is automatically ordered for you. Yeah, like I, I just I, I'm, I'm, I'm obviously I'm different than most people because I, I only care about the gaming shit. Like, yeah. I, I have a computer, right? I, I I literally run my games on one of my two monitors for my computer. So when I want to watch a live stream, I watch it on my other monitor right beside my screen when I'm playing a game. So I'm you know I'm playing Demon Souls or whatever, watching some Penny Arcade TV, yeah, etc. Same same thing so like, with me. It's, like, it's like, not, that's not the everyday situation, right? That's not the go sit on the couch and, no. and sit down and watch NFL. Yeah. And for me, but you're also I mean you're the kind of person that is not going to be moved one way or the other. Oh, absolutely, right? absolutely. Yeah. I, I'm I'm one. Of, I'm I guess like what they would call a power user. And I'm obviously yeah. invested in Sony just because they fucking put games out. And when I want to play a yeah. game, I want to sit down and play a fucking Japanese RPG or something, not some cinematic movie experience like Uncharted. And it's like, I don't know. Like, uh, Nintendo has used to always have the games, and it just seems like they've lost that. Uh, 3DS, though, I, I, going strong. Yeah, 3DS will, I mean... It's not because of Nintendo, right? It's because of the third parties. I guess. Like the the last... Mario Brothers game is really good, though. <laughs> Really good Mario game. I played. I haven't played Luigi's Mansion, which I do want to play. I think I'm sure it's really good. But I played three, uh, 3D Land, which is excellent. Uh, a little bit yeah, easier. Yeah, that game's really good. It's really good. Uh, and like, if they could keep that quality standard up and just, I, and I know they can do it. They just like they just don't do it. Like I don't know. All right. Anyway, let's on. move on. To, and uh, you want to read that? You wanted to talk shit about the virtual console re- releases. Um, it's they're fucking terrible. Um, <laughs> they're just terrible. It's embarrassing. Let's them off. Uh, it's always like it's right on me right now. Excite bike. It's it's five of the games that have already been on for the thirty cent promotion. The end. Uh, I remember that are in the ambassador program. The only new game is Super Mario World, which hey, all good on them. That's the one fucking game you want to put on, but um, not its shitty sequel, Yoshi's Island. Uh, <laughs> but uh, Yoshi's Island is an awesome game. Fuck you. Move on. I mean, like, it's a fine game, but as a sequel to Super Mario World, just like Jeff said, like. No thanks. No thanks. I want. I want. But, but I mean, like, I don't. I don't so so much care what the title is. Like, it's not. It's not really a sequel. Yeah, I mean, it has it's, nothing it's, to do with Super the first Mario one. World Two, Yoshi's Island. But, but they, like, just, the title, I don't. Man. I didn't. I'm not saying it's a real sequel. I don't think it's a real sequel at all. I think it's complete bullshit. But Nintendo put the title on there. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. I'm not a slave to no titles, man. <laughs> I don't. I, no, I don't care. I think the yeah. Yoshi's Island is a great game, but it is okay. not. It is. It is not a. It is not a sequel to Super Mario World. Yeah. It is an amazing game. It's a good game. Super Mario World is an amazing game. All right. Bottom line: the VC release window right now is shit. Awful. Yeah. When Earthbound comes out, there you go. There's a good game. Um, yeah. All right. So we have our one email here. Shall yeah, we? Wait, for us? Dude, wait. Wait a sec. Yes. Okay. Let's make it proper. A proper introduction introduction emails if you want to send us emails you can send one at giant bomb community podcast at gmail.com and we will try to answer it today we have well, one email yes, and uh absolutely. nick's yeah. wanted to answer it so go on next it's not like we have a lot of emails to get through um 
So this email comes in from devoted listener Bloody Guy. He says, hi again. I have a few things to say about podcast number four. First of all, it would be nice if you waited while talking about Dota until after everyone says, well, yeah, I agree. <laughs> For sure, <there's> people <laughs> talking about Dota in, you know, indefinitely. Uh, Which is why Polish cast excised Dota exactly. from today's episode. Uh, he also mentioned, Bloody guy, uh, I agree. He also mentions our discussions of the term gamer, uh, links to a Penny Arcade discussion of the term on extra credits, which I've seen, as well as the, uh, he talks about gender episodes they also produce, which are well worth watching. I recommend you guys check them out if you haven't seen them. I, yeah, we're probably going to touch upon the, yeah, whole, probably, the whole feminist uh, backhole and sixes in, in games or in maybe a week or two. Next time I'm on, I can probably, because if I'm not here, you're going to miss out on my extremely harsh views. Uh, mm. I know, what would you do? Uh, yeah, they're all by extra credits. Extra credits on Penny Arcade TV, excellent. You should watch those anyway. Um, and he says, uh, finally, I wanted to ask you, what is the title of the song starting at 138? I assume it means an hour at 38. Um, yeah. This song is a remix of Night Call by uh, Sawagi, which I will link in the description, hopefully, if I remember to do this. Anyway, it's yeah. Night Call, Sawagi remix. Uh, Night Call is by Kavinsky, who's a great kind of electronic, I guess, composer. He's really cool music, a very uh, specific style, kind of 80s action movie. Uh, he did the soundtrack to Drive, which is where everyone knows him from, but he has a lot of great music in general. Uh, really? yeah. What do you mean, really? Yeah, he does. yeah, he's awesome. I love that soundtrack. You should check out Kavinsky, then. He's really, really cool. I'm uh, going to do that. Thank you. And uh, this is thanks for talking about my comment and for the broadcast. Well, it's a little presumptuous of you that we would read your email on air. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> anyway, thank, thank you for your email. We really appreciate it. And uh, everyone else should fucking email us, too. You have more to say. Um, aside from that, uh, I don't know. Is there anything else you guys want to say? Any before? final thoughts? Any wrap it up here? Edge. Edge. Yeah, let's fuck this bomb because even let's fuck this podcast even more. Like, I still think the publicity we get from him suing us would be so good. Yeah, like Tim Lang, grab this shit. We're gonna name this episode Edge, just to make it easy for you. Yeah. All right, let's yep. All right. let's wrap it up. Let's bring this bitch home. Hey, you know, thanks for listening, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah, you were listening to the fifth episode of the Giant Bomb Community Podcast. Did uh, with me were I, I, I was Ghost, your host. Ghost host with the most space ghost yet ho- host to host, coast to coast, Poland to Poland, whatever. <laughs> you were listening to the Polish cast. <laughs> Poland has a coast, right? There you go, perfect. Yeah, it has. Let's see, yeah, yeah. And I, I'm on the east coast. Or... Well, I'm not actually. I'm on. I'm in Toronto, so I'm on the coast of a lake, and the lake is kind of connected to the ocean. How do you feel about Lake Ontario? <laughs> it's like the least. It's like the least Great Lake. Ouch, that's harsh. <laughs> I think it's the greatest of the Great Lakes, personally. No, nah, man, Michigan, Michigan or nothing. That's the way I feel about <laughs> the Great Lakes. What, what, is the, what is the closest body of water to you, Red and Black? Uh, a lake, Lake Lanier, but that's a, a gigantic death trap, so I guess probably the uh, Gulf of Mexico. I don't have a fucking sea, so... Yeah, I see that you have us beat here. I see what you what you're doing here. Yeah. Joining me to, joining me today was Nix, awesome. as always, oh. almost always. Uh, Red and black, morbid coffee, and Alaska gamer. Alaska gamer and morbid coffee. Uh, you may have noticed they mysteriously disappeared. Of course, because we're recording this a day later after my power went out. Of course, we appreciate them joining us as always, and would have had them on today if we hadn't been trying to rush this out. Uh, but. You know, get, get Hi, sh- I'm Marbert Coffee. Thanks for listening to me. <laughs> All right, we're done. All right. We're done. On this right. positive note, we're done. Thanks for listening. Goodbye. Good night. <laughs> Bye. See ya. Bye.